Hello, and welcome to this lesson. In this video, we'll start learning the basics of components in Svelte. Svelte's architecture is based on the idea of coupled components. A component is a piece of the UI that should only perform a single task. These components are then combined into pages that later forms the full application. As an example, let's consider a simple task list app. We have a component that's responsible for adding a new task and one that's responsible for displaying all the tasks in a list. Each of these components is a self-contained unit of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And everything it needs to function is contained within that component's file. A component can also be made up of multiple other components. For example, an active task can be its own component, as well as a completed task. Components can communicate with each other in many ways, like props and events. They can also get data from external resources, like Firebase. Components are usually stored in a separate folder inside the source directory. The only exception is the root app component, the app.svelte file, which is stored directly in the source folder. Up until now, we've been using the root app component to explain the fundamental concepts of Svelte. But, the root app component is typically only used to display our other components, like the tasks, on certain conditions. Let's create our first component. We'll go to the File Explorer, right-click on the source directory, and select New Folder. The convention is to call it Components, but you can call it whatever you like. Right-click the New Components folder and select New File. We'll call it Greeting.svelte and press Enter to create the new component. To keep the example simple for now, we'll just let the component output a greeting message in a heading. So, H1, hello from a component. At the moment, the message won't be rendered in the browser. That's because the component isn't connected to the rest of the application. To connect it, we follow a simple two-step process. Step 1 is to import the component into another component that is connected to the rest of the application. If there aren't any, we use the root app component. Step 2 is to create a component instance in the markup by adding it as a custom tag. We'll use the root app component to connect the greeting, so let's open it and delete everything inside. To import a component, we use the JavaScript import from statement at the top of the script block. So, import greeting from current directory, then move into components, then greeting.svelte. Now that Svelte knows about the component, we can use it inside the markup by specifying it as a custom HTML tag. The custom tag is just the name of the component. It can be an open and closed tag or a self-closing tag. Typically, we only use open and closed tags when we're overriding content with slots. The rest of the time, we use self-closing tags. That's all we need to connect the component to the rest of the app. If we run the example in the browser, we'll see the heading with the greeting message. As we mentioned earlier, components can be made up of other components. We follow the same process as before, but instead of importing it into the root app component, we import it into the component where we want to nest it. So let's create another component in the components folder called nestedcomponent.svelte. We'll add a heading to it that says, I'm a nested component. And to help it stand out a bit, we'll create a style section target the H2, and make the background blue, and the text color white. Now, let's switch over to the greeting component, and import nested component from nestedcomponent.svelte. We don't add the components folder in the path, because they're both inside it. Then, we'll create an instance of nested component, below the heading. If we save and head over to the browser, we'll see the greeting message from the greeting component and the message from the nested component below it in blue. All right, that concludes this lesson on the basics of components in Svelte. In the next video, we'll learn how to send data from a parent component to its child with props. 
Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again in the next one.